Anita Shelton is the president of D.C. Women in Politics. This is an advocacy group to promote female candidates. And uh, Ms. Shelton, thanks for joining us. You were quoted in this article. Thank you for inviting D.C. Women in Politics. Well, I, what do you make of this? According to your quote in this Washington Post article, you're seeing uh, Muriel Bowser pulling higher among white and Hispanic women than with African-American women, and African-American women seem to be wanting four more years of Vincent Gray. Well, it really comes as a surprise to, to us, the, uh, D.C. Women in Politics, because we are interested in promoting... Uh, progressive women, and we consider um, uh, Muriel to be, Miss Bowser, to be a progressive woman. Uh, we are trying to really understand it. Uh, the good news is that there are uh, uh, women who are African American who are supporting her. Uh, the question is why the others are not, and we we really attribute it to the the feeling that some people have that a woman, particularly a African American woman who makes herself available, should be excellent in all aspects of life, and uh, we we feel that while Muriel is an ex as a good candidate, she is not without without some uh, needs for improvement, and I think that they have have uh, kind of. Uh, danced on those wow. rather than looking at her. And I think that some people who are older in the community go back to Sharon Pratt-Dixon, yep, and they say that uh, we don't want another Sharon Pratt-Dixon. I don't know what was wrong with Sharon that much other than she lost the baseball, uh, the football get, uh, stadium, so maybe the males and women feel that that was really a standard bearer. So we are really well. It is is it is it is it uh, Sharon Pratt Dixon or something? Remember she changed Sharon her name. Sharon Pratt Kelly. Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah. I mean, is it that, or or is it the fact that many people look at Muriel Bowser as somebody being representative of the richer parts of town? I can't. I can't seem to 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 see that she, um, of course, comes from a. Uh, um, what we consider middle class family, but she's definitely not any elite elitist. And uh, but I guess if you live in four and you uh, four has been known as the Gold Coast and <laughs> and all of that, then uh, and for the women who are in uh, Ward Eight, that may be represented. But we we feel that it is really deeper than that. It has to do with some ideas that um, a woman who is running or a, is supposed to be like the male uh, dominated, well, she has to be, but, I'm sorry. But, well, well you, I heard you say that before, Anita Shelton, but i, I got to challenge you a little bit because she is getting votes from women. She's getting votes from white women and Hispanic women. It's African-American women who aren't coming forward a, as much. Uh, so, so it's not really a gender thing, is it? Well, I think it is um, a gender thing because we are a combination not only of gender but of race. And for the African-American woman, uh, our experience has been quite different in politics uh, historically. Uh, they say the, pep, uh, the kind of order is uh, the white male, the... Um, uh, black male, the white woman, and then the African-American woman. So we haven't had the experience. And I guess we are concerned about whether but or not an African-American woman can represent the District of Columbia in the if, same way. If, you're, if your assessment is how African-American women perceive themselves, that, that it's, it's the white male, the black male, the white woman, and then at the very bottom of the social strata in their, in their experience is the, is the black female, then why wouldn't they celebrate someone who is running for office You'd like that? You'd think the black women in the, in the would district em, would, would embrace, would embrace them. Yeah. Well, yes, they, they really should embrace it. But it's uh, what they call winnability. Is that a good word? Yeah, here? sure, sure, yeah. Uh, they uh, think that she just can't win, and so they don't want to waste their vote kind of thing. And, they, uh, and that they have some standards about what kind of woman 
can win in this particular uh, election. Huh. Now, Anita Shelton, again, Anita Shelton, president of D.C. Women in Politics. Uh, we're on the line kind of analyzing the Muriel Bowser vote right now. And, in, er, uh, you know, early voting is happening now. People are already voting in this primary. And you've been around this city uh, for a long time, haven't you, Anita Shelton? Yes, I certainly have. So i got to ask you, with the news that it looks like Marion Barry is going to be giving his endorsement to the incumbent mayor, Vincent Gray, instead of Muriel Bowser, uh, you would think that Marion Barry would embrace Muriel Bowser's candidacy because it could breathe a, a breath of uh, new air into the district and get things off on a, on a new start. What do you think of Marion Barry's endorsement of Vince Gray? Well, um, you know, it's the old boys' network. It's still at play here, you know. Uh, you know, I have a... Hold on now. You're, you're suggesting that Marion Barry is endorsing Vince Gray just uh, out, of, out of sexist... Uh, uh, I, 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 don't, I don't know whether I would call it sexist, but I do call it the old boys' network. Is uh, there anything... You know, that is a really basically uh, true. Well, Muriel Bowser needed to take Barry out for a steak. That's what needed to happen. <laughs> no, I think that it's here, here we go, here we go again in terms of what a woman needs to do in order to get uh, endorsements for males and, and females. And she has to be viewed by others as a superwoman. Mm. And while we think that she has all the attributes that are necessary, she is, you know, she has to persuade. And in these last weeks, uh, she needs to continue to persuade. And how would you go about doing that? Huh? How would you go about doing that? By speaking to the issues of African-American women, which uh, in many cases may be uh, slightly different, both in terms we're talking about income equality. That's one of the things. But for African-American women generally, particularly throughout the area, it's the question of poor women and women who are disenfranchised, women who are in homeless shelters, women who are in TANF, that that is the kind of issues that will generate and stimulate women. We're talking about women, African-American women, who are being discriminated against. All right. Anita Shelton, we've, we're out of time, but we sure do appreciate you uh, yeah, coming and talking about us. this topic with us. And uh, we're going to try to reach out to Miriam Berry and get his uh, reaction to you, oh, saying oh, that he's oh, just oh. part of the old boys network. <laughs> Okay. Maybe we can have you two on to debate it out. Brian and I will just sit back and let you two go at it. Uh, that might be interesting. I have the greatest amount of admiration for Mary. Oh, no, there's no backpedaling now, Anita Shelton. The deed is done. I'm not backpedaling. I'm just saying there is a old boys network in this town, and you know it. All right, I know. And Mary and Barry and Vince Gray, they are the president, the co-presidents of that old boys network. Yeah, apparently so. Anita Shelton, right. president of D.C. Women in Politics. Thanks for joining us. Thanks.